Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm going solo today, and uh, that gives me a chance uh, to show a couple of things here, uh, mainly because it'd be rude and considerate uh, to my uh, co-host doing all this stuff. So now it gives me an opportunity. So bear with me, only because we're going to be doing this once. Uh, the show's being taped, and it's going to be on YouTube, and then everybody can see um, all the things that I'm talking about. And uh, first off is the website. And the reason I'm doing this is to let everybody know the website and the blog are still up there. We, uh, we came back live two weeks ago. We're celebrating 26 years, 26 years live on the air. And this is the website. And um, what you call it? Um, we got a couple links there. We got the show dates. Uh, the links are up in the top corner will take you uh, to Facebook. Then Pinterest, Instagram, uh, I still got a problem with Google Plus for some reason, the link there. Um, and Flickr and a bunch of other things. But many, um, uh, that, that website is updated to two times a month, okay? And uh, I still got a clip over here uh, of me doing the interview with Mark Hamill that I did back in the 1990s when he was talking about Wing Commander, a PC game. Um, and then uh, we also have a link somewhere in there, uh, near the bottom of my Godzilla community page that I, um, I set up. And yeah, it's right around there. And I, uh, for some reason, I can't get a, a button on that, but um, an icon, should I say. But there goes the link. You have to be part of Google+, Plus. unfortunately. You have to sign up. But uh, we got 3,000 members there. I'd like to say hello to all the moderators. Thanks for supporting the site and all the members. So we hit 3,000 finally, and of course, um, uh, you know, Godzilla Resurgence is going to be uh, coming out this, uh, this summer, but I'll get more into that. And let's go to our blog. Bear with me, like I said, um, because once we do this, um, it's, this is going to be like this for the whole summer, so I don't have to repeat myself. So, and it goes to blog. Now, I've been behind a couple of days. It's basically from Monday to Thursday, I update the blog. And again, uh, if you go to, from the official website, there's a link that goes there uh, to here. And if you click on that logo, Video Link Express on, on, the, on your right hand side, it will click you back to the website. So I know it's kind of like um, going back and forth, but uh, like I said, the website is only updated two times a month. The blog is daily, okay? And uh, the last uh, radio show uh, I did yesterday, I got a little uh, bit behind there. We're talking about uh, Box Office Civil War is going to cross the $1 billion mark uh, as of today. Uh, and I, I mentioned a lot of things on that blog, Blog Talk Radio. And the reason for that is uh, we're going to be doing that show the week that we don't do a live show here. So one, one week live on m and the other week um, a Blog Talk Radio. Okay, and then if you go scroll down a little bit, um, Talk Show Radio, Talk Show Radio has been put on hold. You see SoundCloud over in the bottom. I did promise you that's my official music logo. Okay, and the reason I'm, um, I'm mentioning that is I got a little uh, 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 trivia for you for Star Wars Prince and Deadpool. Okay, that's one hell of a trivia. Uh, that's the theme song that you heard at the beginning. The theme song is right there on SoundCloud. SoundCloud is going to start uh, Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to start putting up uh, some more musical cues, soundtracks, and original music that I compose. And if you heard that song at the beginning of the show, um, that was done on an 8-track a long time ago. Prince was one of, my, um, uh, one of my idols as far as composing and playing all the instruments yourself. Um, the first one was Paul McCartney in the early 60s. Uh, he came out with a solo album where he played all the instruments. Uh, and, uh, and beginning of solo career back in the 70s. Also in the 70s, Stevie Wonder, where he played all the instruments including, in the, uh, including the drums. And then there was Prince. If you listen to 1999, Arrange, produce, compose, written, um, chopped, edit, everything, whatever you want to call it. And so Prince was a, a real big inspiration. And does all the, besides the drum track, but that was a drum machine, a, a good old fashioned Roland 707 drum machine, um, the keyboards and guitars and the bass were all done by me. Um, and, and the reason for that is e economics, folks. The band ain't around, and song got to be put together, it's got to be put up. That's what happens, okay? And thank, uh, thank God for technology nowadays. A lot of, well, a lot of composers do that. They play all the instruments. But uh, Prince, uh, Prince was definitely an, an inspiration. So let's get to the show. Okay, there we go. So now, don't mind me because I got to read my notes and I'm blind as a bat. So 
he goes to Shazan. So I got some trivia. I got some uh, news to cover. Uh, so the, now the things, if I, I got a lot here. Whatever I don't cover, we'll be on the radio show. And then we'll be back here in two weeks. Okay, so let's get right to it. Like I said, um, Civil War is uh, um, hitting the, crossing the $1 billion mark this weekend. And it needs about another $200, $200 million to beat Iron Man for the number 10 spot. Now the thing is, that's probably going to happen. Um, now people say, what's going to happen with X-Men coming out next week? Well, right now, Angry Birds is actually kind of leading Civil War by a couple million. Okay, um, and then Neighbors, well, it's also making money. People are going to the movies. Not too bad, right? Um, now they say, what's going to happen with X-Men? Is the X-Men going to do any more uh, damage? Probably not. X-Men is getting really, really mixed reviews. They say it's not the one of the best X-Men out there. Then again, most X-Men movies are not that good. Let's, let's be... Let's be realistic, huh, folks? Um, and basically, Apocalypse is just a reboot of everything. Um, and internationally, um, X-Men does do good, but something happened with Batman versus Superman. India, Japan, and especially China nixed it. But um, um, X-Men movies do okay over there, but nothing beats uh, Marvel, um, uh, Avengers. They... Um, these movies do huge in China, and China is such a big part of the uh, international box office, and also has to do with repeats. Now, what happened with Superman, Superman um, didn't even clear ni 900 million, and you heard about the, uh, there was a big, um, 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 well, a lot of uh, studio executives, they got switched over positions, the Ben Affleck got promoted to ex-producer, now everybody's looking at Suicide Squad, is that going to be the big uh, turnout? And X-Men, well, looks like uh, Civil War is going to be in the top, not only top 10 all time, okay? Um, the only other movie I was, um, I got to say, will be, uh, well, it's going to be Star Wars, Rogue One. So let me go a little bit of backtrack over here, if you don't mind, uh, so I can tie this in together. Um, Gar Garth Edwards, um, he's directing Rogue One. Um, he did Godzilla. Okay, 2014 version, and he left Godzilla. He looks like he's going to concentrate on other projects. They're taking too long to come up with the next Godzilla. Uh, now, somebody was happening. What's going to happen with the Japanese Toho version of Godzilla that's coming out this summer? And Toho said themselves, it's going to come out uh, only in Japan, and internationally, it's going to be released on Blu-ray, DVD, which kind of sucks. But then again, it doesn't matter because this stuff shows up on BitTorrent. Let me backtrack a little bit again. Um, you know, it's going to wind up on the internet. Um, it, it's the same thing like um, uh, Star Trek. No, the trailer premiered Star Trek Beyond, and somebody posted on uh, what was it on Google Plus, and that poster Star Trek Beyond lo almost looked like the same exact poster as Star Trek the Motion Picture. Okay, the first one was uh, with uh, William Shatner, Captain Kirk, and all that, uh, which I thought it was kind of funny. And then on the, on the bottom of the poster says no comparisons, and well. The poster sure looks like a duplicate, okay? The new poster of Star Trek Beyond compared to, to the first movie, okay, of the franchise, should I say. Uh, and then people were asking, what's going to happen with Star Trek? How come there's no, how come they created these new villains? Remember, um, um, JJ, that's, almost forgot that. JJ uh, introduced the Klingons. I didn't like that version, the earrings and all that. Ah. He introduced them in the last Star Trek movie. How come they, uh, they didn't go back to the Klingons for the third movie? Because now they're going to have the TV series. And again, that's going to be all access. They, they expect the, the fans to go and actually uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, as a matter of fact, all the other TV shows are there right now. Um, you know, Voyager, Enterprise, DS9, uh, Next Generation, including the original. And um, they expect the fans, and, and of course, all that stuff is available bit torrent. So it's it kind of like, you know, the Star Trek fans, yeah. First of all, hopefully the show doesn't suck. Uh, anybody saw the, the, the movie trailer? Well, we're crossing our fingers that the movie's not that bad. That's a trailer. They, uh, it, it looked like an overblown TV show, uh, TV episode, should I say. And uh, so as far as um, uh, the, the new TV show, it's going to be a, a bit tournament. They, they, you know, CBS being greedy said, well, you have to subscribe to the channel. No way. Look what happened with uh, Game of Thrones. That was bit tournament all over the place. But it, in that case, it helped a lot because a lot of people in the first season said, ah, I don't know, the Dungeons and Dragons, you know? And thanks to BitTurrent, the show became huge. So it was a benefit, you know? So and I, I'm not supporting BitTurrent. I don't think it's right or wrong. All I'm saying is a show like Game of Thrones 
really benefit from extra people seeing it who not you know they don't I don't want to subscribe to HBO I don't know I don't Dungeons and Dragons I don't know then people got caught on with it I said you maybe I will subscribe to HBO of course they got HBO now when people uh, what HBO Go I think I believe and uh, not because people want to see that uh, and yes, to answer your question, yes, HBO are looking at uh, all the shows. Vinyl is not doing that good. The, the, they're called the showrunner. He's like the main basic uh, scriptwriter. Same thing like Doctor Who. Stephen Moffat, he was the showrunner, the, the head scriptwriter. He left. I think that's a good point because he was running out of steam anyway, running out of original ideas. Um, and then because of that, um, you know, um, with vinyl, the guy uh, quit, and they, they got to redo it. The show's very weak. So they're looking for something, the Game of Thrones, to be replaced. The Game of Thrones, uh, they, they, they're saying they probably had another two, three years. So they're trying to re uh, replace that. That's like the big, you know, the big thing about HBO. And, of course, I did a pilot episode with James Franco. Um, I just a little background part about, uh, uh, it's called The Deuce. And people were asking me, Where, what happened to that? Well, they're going to start filming in June. Hopefully, I'll be part of that somehow. Uh, and they're looking at that um, to be, uh, hopefully, will take over. They're going to film, and that, uh, that's going to premiere, like, in 2017. Okay, as a matter of fact, that ep the pilot episode was directed by Michelle McLaren, who, she was executive producer of X-Files, executive uh, producer of Breaking Bad. She directed one, two episodes of Breaking Bad, and she directed a couple uh, episodes of Game of Thrones, believe it or not. If you get season, was it, season five, episode four, she actually does an audio commentary. She directed me in two scenes, and I, I, she was a wonderful person and wonderful director. And, um, you know, that, that was an experience in itself. Now, I'll be talking more about that. Again, I'm answering a question. Your, uh, your work as a background actor, are you going to go more into that? That's going to be safe for the radio show. Let's go back. Now, what's happening also, uh, uh, somebody was asking me, so what's going to happen uh, that Garth Erwitz is, is um, uh, he's left Godzilla, right? Well, they're still going to be on track. They switched the, the, the theater dates because everybody's looking for King Kong versus Godzilla. Yes, they're finally going to remake this year. That's the one we're, everybody's looking forward to. Uh, and believe it or not, a lot of people said, oh, you know, the Japanese is so cheesy, you know, two guys in a costume fighting. You know whose idea was this? That's right, the guy who created the original King Kong back in 1933. This is an American uh, idea. Uh, the, um, one of the co-creators of King Kong went to Japan and said, can we have a, uh, your Godzilla so we can fight? And Gattel said, sure, how about we make it over here? It is a U.S.-Japanese uh, co-production, but it was an American idea, not the Japanese. But the, the, the only thing they had was, you know, Japanese production at that time wasn't up to par to American. Boy, that's changed, hasn't it? Okay, uh, same thing with China. Um, China's going to have its own uh, superhero movie, and they're making it for $80 million. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up, uh, $80 million. Uh, the guys who did Civil War, the two brothers. That, no, are they brothers, cousins, something like that. Anyway, they did direct the Civil War. They're going to China, and they're going to make a brand new superhero movie for $80 million. Now, going back to the box office, I'm talking about numbers here. The, because Batman vs. Superman was a big disappointment, and now they're all looking at Suicide Squad. Now, they're looking at X-Men. Is it going to do just as huge as Civil War? Because Deadpool uh, happened, and Deadpool has been the big game changer. Um, I got my little notes in the back here, just uh, as a reminder. And Ryan Reynolds said himself in the commentary. There's uh, two great commentaries, but Ryan Reynolds' commentary is the better one. And he mentioned they were doing like a five, he was comparing the budget, um, Ordinary movies would, uh, would take like 89 days to shoot, and he, they did it in 48 days. On the budget of 80 million, he got $50 trying to replace $500. That's the comparison he made. And I said this on the show. Um, it's like Deadpool's a game changer because it only costs 80 million, and it, it's almost 800 million. It did not get released in China because of the cursing, the violence, and uh, the nudity. If it did get released in China, it would have got an, another 100 and 200 million. It would have been close to a 1 billion. Now, the studio executives are looking at this, and it's going to be affecting Justice League. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, for example, why Deadpool was such a game changer. And I got another film here I'm going to mention here. 
Minions. Everybody knows I'm a big, huge Minions fan. If you go to Pinterest, I'm always posting little comedic things about Minions. Um, like Disney just said, okay, um, Zootopia, big surprise, right? It's almost a billion dollar mark. It's the second biggest animation. No. The second biggest animation money making in the box office is Frozen and then Minions because this crossed a billion dollar mark. A picture that only cost $80 million. And studios are looking at this. Deadpool, um, 80 million, it, cro it crossed 750 million. Could have gotten 900 million if it was released in China. Okay, and that's affecting all the budgets all across the board. Now, X Men is in trouble. They're hoping that because of Deadpool, because of Centru 20th Century Fox, they're hoping that it will cash in on that craze. Why, why was Civil, uh, Civil War such huge? At the box office, it still is, and it's still going to pass, you know, it's going to be in the top 10 of all time. Very simple. Uh, they were smart, including Spider-Man, and they did something with Ant-Man that nobody expected. You haven't seen the movie? Okay, no spoiler. Okay. Was my, my, and that, that, that whole, whole huge fight scene was great. Something that Batman and Superman kind of lacked. Okay, you introduced Wonder Woman and you had Doom, okay, or Apocalypse, whatever the hell they're called, uh, Doomsday, or whatever. And it, it was kind of disappointing. Now, I love the second half of Batman versus Superman, but, you know, compared to C Civil War, and having Winter Soldier and Iron Man just beat the crap out of Captain America, that's a keeper, okay? The Batman versus Superman, let's be realistic. Oh, there's not really no fight there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Poof! That's the end of Batman. But anyway, so here's an example, okay? And this is what the studios are looking at. Let's say friend number A over here said, Frank, give me a dollar. I'll make you $10. Okay, no problem. Uh, and I'll keep a dollar for myself because I made you the $10 and you get your dollar back. But I still make $8 profit. Friend number two over here, he goes, let me get 50 cents and I'll make you $100. And I'm only going to charge you 50 cents. That means I make a profit of $99. That's what Deadpool did. And that's what Minions did last year. And the studios are looking at this. Uh, Aquaman coming out of the water in Just a League, fighting a giant 100-foot squid. Not going to happen. He's going to probably fight a little baby octopus, maybe about 12 inches. Okay? They're going to cut the budget down. Okay? And that's going to affect Just a League. Um, now, which refers to... Mm, let me try not to jump here. Okay, Flash. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, where am I going to stick Prince in here somewhere? I'm going to mention him again. Well, here it goes. Um, the TV show Flash. It was costing $3 million an episode, and CBS said, we can't afford it. Let's give it to CW11. Now they're going to cut the budget on that. I'm going, where are you cutting the budget? You, I mean, it sure wasn't in the special effects. They never had the money for the special effects to begin with. I mean, the special effects. I love, I love Supergirl. But it, it was just, just cheesy. Uh, Supergirl was costing, th excuse me, I meant to say Supergirl. Uh, Supergirl, $3 million an episode. And it sure wasn't money spent on the special effects. So CW11 uh, took on uh, Supergirl and they dumped, um, they dumped uh, CBS dumped uh, Supergirl. I'm getting tongue tied here, don't mind me. So CBS decided to dump Supergirl, give it to CW11. They're going to cut the budget. Now, the reason I mentioned Flash, because Kevin Smith, said they're really doing a really good uh, job on the budget for a TV show. I just got my show's cross story about that. But, so Kevin Smith, believe it or not, um, now, here's a little trivia. Okay, here we go. Um, Kevin Smith actually got hired by Prince to do about uh, a documentary, like a bio. Kevin Smith only lasted about a week. They couldn't get together how they want to do the project and everything like that, so Kevin Smith uh, left the project. So there's, there's some, a lot of footage. That everybody's talking about the music vaults that he, uh, he had. Well, um, he, they say he's got about like 10 albums worth of stuff and even more, but a lot of concerts also were taped and then never got released. Well, there's a documentary out there that was an unfinished documentary directed by Kevin Smith, and Kevin Smith couldn't agree with uh, Prince or anything. They couldn't say eye to eye on the style of that. Um, um, but uh, the reason I mention this here also, there's a little editing uh, trick uh, for your editors out there. 
Uh, the commentary by the editor, I'm going to be talking more about this on the radio show, okay? But this is a, a little trivia. Um, the editor learned a trick about cutting into frames, but believe it or not. We, um, when they make a movie, sometimes they go, let's say, uh, one page equals one minute of screen time equals a million dollars in the budget. But the editors, they don't, they don't go per minute, okay? They go... They don't even go by seconds. Seconds are split into frames, 30 frames. And there's a trick that the director learned to use on Prince um, Purple Rain that he learned from George Lucas, believe it or not, at UCLA. That's my little trivia right there, folks. Uh, so, the, you know, you're watching, I'm watching Purple Rain. I'm listening to the commentary, and he messes George Lucas Star Wars. I said, didn't see that coming. And, of course, um, John Boyega already... Uh, as, as stating that it's going to be darker for Star Wars. You can see that guy has come a long way from Attack the Block. That's my pick of the week. If you haven't seen Attack the Block, you will need subtitles because they're learning in that English Cockney accent. Now, talking about English accent, I'm going to try to fit this in here, folks. Don't mind me. Uh, trivia about James Bond, talking about English. Now, Daniel Craig doesn't know if he's going to come back for James Bond. Spectre, we didn't even... Um, there's an old saying, whether it's old is new. So why am I mentioning Spectre? Because Daniel Craig is making big news right now about James Bond. And this, Spectre was kind of an indirect remake. Even when uh, Bluffhead said, well, you know, my hideout is a crater. And remember, if anybody's been listening to the radio shows, when the hell are we going to get my volcano? Okay, so he introduced Bluffhead, which was kind of lame. And they introduced not a volcano, but a crater. Okay. The thing about Spectre was a mumble j jumbo mess where they tied all the films together. And um, there was that line of, uh, oh, Blofeld says to James Bond, oh, what's the matter, James? Cuckoo? So what the who wrote this crap? Cuckoo? And uh, basically, um, they, it, that's a stepbrother, believe it or not. Real dumb way uh, uh, to, to go. As far as the Daniel Craig, He's worried about his kneecap. Same thing happened with um, Sean Connery. He had an accident in one of his movies where he busted his kneecap. And now he's tired because he, you know, he's a, he has a hard time walking. When he did the last movie, Extraordinary League of Gentlemen, uh, he injured, re injured his kneecap. That's what made him retire. Okay, so Daniel Craig is looking at that. So, do I want to continue being all this physical James Bond? Now, they offered $100 million for two pictures. Um, why not? You know, I mean, they're going to have stuntmen for this. And everything is done with CG and editing. And if there's a scene where he needs to see his face, they cut and paste the face. They Photoshop the face. They have a stuntman, and then they can put Daniel Craig's uh, face on the stuntman. So it can be done. Whether he comes back or not, the guess who's number one pick is Loki. That's right. Uh, Tom Hiddleston, I believe his name is. And he played Loki in The Avengers. Okay? So they're looking at that as a, as a replacement. What I thought of, about Spectre, because I never reviewed it on the show here. Uh, indirect remake of You Only Live Twice, I prefer this movie, uh, when they, James Bond meets Blofred. I think that was a better uh, movie. Uh, I like all the, um, the references. There was a lot of references in the movie um, to all the James Bond movies, but the movie was a, a bit of a mess. And they're thinking about making uh, For Your Eyes Only as the remake. And, you know, the movie doesn't have to be uh, uh, costing $300 million in five, six different locations. You know, make it two locations. Diamonds are Forever, I mentioned that because there's a big trivia about uh, Inspector. Inspector Daniel Craig asked the writer, said, uh, do you know where you're going? And that's a big reference to Diamonds are Forever when... Um, um, James Bond is stuck in a tunnel, and he sees a rat. I said, you know which way to, to, to get out of here? So, again, there's a lot of trivia, which was fun about Spectre, but the movie was just uh, uh, too long, too bloated. Um, I, again, uh, it, it will uh, Daniel Craig come back? They're looking at Tom Henderson. They're talking to him right now. So, you know, Daniel Craig is going to uh, flip the coin. So when we come back in two weeks, we'll find out about that. Okay, now, why I mentioned, about again, about these budgets, 200, 300 million Batman vs. Superman, if I confess, it, it cost them $300 million. And then for marketing, cost, uh, and advertising, it cost another $200 million. And now the movie um, made $900 million. Uh, where's that money going to come from for making the Justice League? Barely the profits of Batman vs. Superman. And also, don't forget, one of us has to make all these other films. So, again, Deadpool was a big surprise of the year. 
um, for, the, for the money make, and it's not really such a huge popular character. Now they're looking at Suicide Squad. What's going to happen with that? And, you know, one of them uh, got across the fingers. If that movie doesn't do as good, watch the budget being slashed for Justice League. Uh, the problem is the movies are costing way too much. Okay, uh, let me go down the list here. Um, and one more thing about James Bond, okay. Edru Zalba. How about having him as James Bond? If you're a James Bond fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, an actor pussy, 009, was killed off. And James Bond at the end, played by Roger Moore, kills a guy, uh, one of the bad guys, and that's for 009. And Rush of Love or Thunderball? Uh, Miss Money Penny tells him, you're kind of late for the meeting. He walks into this giant, uh, giant room and you see nine chairs. There's double one, double two, double three, double four, double five, double six, double seven, double eight, double nine. And James Bond sits in this, the seventh chair, which is double seven chair. Okay? Uh, so you, there's, we know there's a whole bunch of spies there. And double nine is mentioned in an inspector. So, Eldridge Alba could be playing double or nine. They can call him, my name is Pence, John Pence. Pence is a variation of the British Pound or, or Spencer, okay? So they can make a franchise. Now, remember Michelle Yeoh um, with Pierre Brosnan, Tomorrow Never Dies? And uh, she was a spy, uh, you know, she was a co agent helping him out. The, she was supposed to get her own franchise, didn't work out. They were looking at Helen Berry, who played Jinx, and she almost uh, became a franchise. And they got that idea from. Um, well, they, they came out, we're talking about Superman, uh, the guy who plays that. Uh, they did a movie, uh, The Man from Uncle. And The Man from Uncle had a spin off called Honey West. She was an agent that worked with the two guys from Man from Uncle. So, again, I would say Edward Zalba should have his own franchise. Uh, and so instead of being, a, uh, he could play, like I said, he could play Double or Nine. People say he could be the James Bond. No, let, let James Bond be James Bond, you know, white English guy. But Elba can have his own franchise. Okay, um, that's it for that. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple other things. What I love about Civil War, okay, um, Ant-Man and Spider-Man, that kid who plays Spider-Man, they got it good. Um, okay, guys, more trivia is going to be on the radio show this coming week. Thanks for everybody for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks. And he compares, like, you know.